Well, greetings everybody out there in YouTube land. Now, some of you have been saying I should build a guitar amp, so that's what I'm going to build today. And if this video isn't too long, I may even be able to strum out a few chords and see how it sounds. But first, let's take a look at some of the parts we're going to be using. For our actual cabinet, I'm going to be using this old 1970s speaker. It's not a particularly wonderful sounding speaker, but I think it'll be good enough for a practice amp. And what we got here is my stereo valve amplifier, which I'm going to modify into a mono push-pull amplifier. And that is going to go into the speaker, and these are the actual tubes. I'm not sure how you pronounce this, because this is a Russian clone of a 6L6, I believe. I don't know how you say these numbers. 6, looks like 6N3C, I don't know what that actually is in English. We've got two of those. We've also got an ECC83, which is pretty much burnt off, but actually this is an ECC81, I just noticed that. But I do have an ECC83 laying around somewhere, so this will just have to be a stand-in until I find that. But that's basically the same tube anyway, it just has a little less gain. Okay, now I'm going to be boring for a while and explain what I'm going to do. So here we have the valve amplifier as it stands right now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the two output transformers with a single center tapped output transformer and we don't need this right in so I'm going to get rid of that so we just have one input and now we need to change the side of the ECC83 change it into a phase inverter so I've put two resistors on the cathode and two resistors on the anode and now we need to feed the output from the left side into the grid into the right side I've put the 470k resistor between the two resistors on the cathode and this way the valve is biased in its midpoint and now we just need to connect up the two output valves. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect the top valve to the anode. And the bottom valve to the cathode. Like you can see. And I might make a few more changes to the circuit. Like put a capacitor here. Might give us some more gain. And then I might change some of the resistors. So we don't load down the output of the left side of that valve, and we don't load down the guitar. Well, I hope you're still alive after that impression of a British person explaining things. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you much longer. So, I'm just going to go through a brief explanation of how this circuit works. So, we've got a signal coming into the left triode, so that gets amplified. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough amplification. We might need to add an extra stage, but hopefully it will be enough. So we feed that amplified signal into the grid on the right triode. And this is set up as a phase inverter. So you notice we've got a 4.7 and a 2.2k resistor here. And we've also got the same thing going on on the cathode. And we've got a grid resistor connected between those two resistors there going into the grid. So this valve should be biased at its midpoint so we should have the same voltage between here and here and the same voltage between here and here but anyway this valve takes that signal it doesn't do any amplification to it in fact we lose a little bit of gain but it splits that signal into two so we get our non-inverted signal here because this side is already going to be inverting that signal, and then this side is going to do that again. So we get our we get a non-inverted signal going to this valve, but we also get an inverted signal going to this valve. So essentially what's going to happen is when our input signal goes positive, this valve will conduct more, and this one will conduct less. And when our input signal goes negative, this one will conduct less, and this one will conduct more. And then it's just put together by the transformer and then sent out to the speaker. Anyway, I think we should do some experiments with our phase inverter, so 
that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's do some experiments with the phase inverter. So I've got an ECC83 tube and I've built the phase inverter part of the circuit. Now I've got to be very careful here because this is a high voltage experiment. I'm just turning the tube's filament on. I know you won't be able to see it glowing. In fact, I cannot see it glowing at the moment. Is it glowing? Okay, yeah, that's on. I'll just give that a few seconds to get up to its full temperature. So, while we're waiting for this to warm up, I'm going to connect my meter to the negative and the other end to the cathode. So first what we're going to do is we're going to measure the voltage between ground and cathode and then we're going to do positive and anode and then we're also going to measure the voltage at the grid. So this should be all warmed up now so I'm going to turn on the high voltage which is also going to take a little bit of time because that also uses a tube rectifier. I've got to be careful because we'll be dealing with about 300 volts here. Okay, seems to be coming up. We should have an equal voltage between the cathode and the ground and the, and the anode and the positive. Well, we don't seem to have anything at the moment because my meter's not on volts. Alright, so we seem to have about 37 volts between cathode and ground. Let's see if we can measure the anode and the positive. Right, so this will be the voltage between the anode and the positive. It should be about the same. So let's turn on our high voltage. Let's see what that gets to. It's climbing up. Excuse me. Well, I think that's going to be about the same. So yeah, it's about the same. About 37 volts. So there must be at least 200 volts going through the tube, so let's measure that. Alright, let's see how much voltage we have going through the tube. Or the valve. Yeah, about 215 volts going through the tube. Let's see what we've got between grid and ground. Hopefully I'm saying the right words because stuff I often say the wrong words when I mean something completely different. So this is between grid and ground. We have about we have about half of that voltage so that's not too far off I guess. I think it was about 37 or something and we've got 16 volts between grid and ground so yeah we still got a bit of headroom there well okay that all seems to be in order so let's connect a signal and a scope to this and let's see what it does okay um, well I've got the phase inverter circuit hooked up to a little signal generator that I made I made that some time ago it uses a TL072 op amp can't quite remember the circuit, but if we look on the scope, I'm probing the anode and the cathode. Now the blue trace is what's coming out of the anode, and the yellow trace is what's coming out of the cathode. And look at that. They're exactly 180 degrees out of phase, and that is exactly what we want. I know you can see a little bit of a flat there and a little bit of a flat there. I don't think that's the um I don't think that's the valve doing that. I think that might actually be the output from this because it's not sometimes it doesn't give the best sine wave output. So let's just adjust the output on this. Let's see. Okay, that's on its full output swing now. I'm not seeing any signs of distortion. 
um, see how much we're actually getting. I'm going to move one of these tracers down a little bit so we can actually see what our peak to peak voltage is. So this is 2 volts peak to peak. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, almost 10 volts peak to peak. So that's a pretty good voltage swing. Actually, it should say somewhere what our voltage swing is. If I just get that. There we are. Ah, almost 10 volts. Alright, let's just put that back where it was. Of course it would help if I was looking through the camera when I did this. Alright, so I'm just going to back this down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the probe off the cathode here, I mean off the anode and I'm going to connect that to the signal generator's output so we can see what the signal generator is actually doing. Hopefully without touching any of the high voltage wires. Okay, that's on the signal generator's output now. So the red, I mean, the blue trace is the signal generator's output and the yellow trace is what's coming out of the valve and yeah. Let's just turn channel 2 off so we can only see the signal generators up. And yeah, that's uh... So yeah, that little bit of flat is actually coming out of that. It's not coming out of that. Well, I'm happy with that. So I think it's about time to build the rest of this thing. And now it's time to rabbit on about the tubes that I have. So, well, I'm not sure how you pronounce these letters, I mean I don't know what that one that looks like an N looks like, but these are basically identical to a 6L6, what was it now, 6L6GA, so let's look at the data sheets. Alright, well now the computer's cooperating again, while it rains outside but I don't think you'll hear that. This is what I'm going with right here, okay, doesn't appear that I can highlight that, but... So, let's see what we're going to need here. Well, I think we're going to be running this on about 270 volts. I'm not exactly sure how much voltage the power supply that I'm going to make is going to give out, but hopefully it's going to be round about that. So, we're going to need 124 ohms and our cathode resistor. Our plate current needs to be about 134 milliamps. And the primary of our transformer needs to be 5000 ohms. Impedance, not DC resistance. So, with all that in mind, I think it's about time to crunch some numbers. Oh, joy. Well, if you're anything like me, you hate doing arithmetic, but I've got it all worked out. Now, because I don't have any transformers that are specifically for coupling a valve to a speaker, we're going to have to settle for some mains step-down transformers instead, and hopefully one of those will be in the ballpark. So, we need to find out the transformer's winding ratio, which is very easy. We'll just put mains into one end and see what comes out the other end. So that's voltage in divided by voltage out. Then we need to find the impedance ratio, because impedance and DC resistance are not the same thing. Impedance is what AC sees, DC resistance is what DC sees. And I'm not going to go into all the mechanics of that, but... So we need to find the impedance ra ratio, which is winding ratio squared, so let's say if it was 30 to 1, it would be 900 to 1, because that's 30 times 30, or 30 squared, depending on what you want to say. And we want to find out what load an 8 ohm speaker is going to put on the tube's output when it's connected to the transformer. So this is where the valves would connect, that's where, the, um, that's where the speaker would connect. So whatever we connect here is going to be reflected here. Only the impedance is going to be a lot higher. I can hear the police outside and the rain is really picking up out there. But... So we're going to connect our AC here, see what comes out there. And I've worked it out that the ideal transformer we need will have an impedance ratio of 625 to 1, which is about a 25 to 1 turns ratio, so let's see if we've got a transformer that, well, does that. 
Well, I've gone and grabbed the three most likeliest transformers that would be usable. Safety. I don't think this one has a center tap. This could be a center tap right here, but I think that's more likely to be a thermal fuse. This one has two 115 volt windings, but I actually, on second thoughts, I don't think this one is going to be suitable because although we could wire this so where the two primaries connect, that could be our center tap. Just had a look at the output voltage, and that doesn't look like a 25 to 1 winding ratio. Now this one, I'm not sure if that has a... I'm not sure if that one has a center tap. So, I really wanted to use this one, but I can tell right away that this is just... doesn't have a big enough winding ratio, so... Pity really, because that's a really nice transformer. It'll probably find its way in another project, but... Right, so let's see if this one is a thermal fuser, if it's actually... A center tap. So I'm just going to put my multimeter on here. If we get, say, a direct something that looks like a direct short, it's a thermal fuse, but if we get some resistance, it's a winding. Nope, that looks like a thermal fuse to me, so that is not a center tap transformer. Well, let's power this one up anyway and see what we get. I don't think the fact that I've stuck a rectifier on there is really going to make much difference. Alright, so here's our little transformer hooked up. Let's just see what we get out. Nothing, apparently. Oh, I haven't got my meter on AC. That would help. Still nothing. Okay, maybe this transformer's not working. Let's just check that we do have AC coming out of here. This is very dangerous. Kids, do not try this at home. I'm trying to open this crocodile clip. As soon as I squeeze on the thing, it just spins around. And I have unplugged this, so I'm not going to electrocute myself while I'm trying to do this. Let's see if we've got anything coming out. 245 volts. So at least we know there's voltage coming out. Well, I think I found out what's wrong with this transformer. This lead here is extremely floppy, so I think the wire inside there is broken off. Well, let's see what we get out of this one. Alright, so let's see what we get out of this transformer. It says 19 volts, but I don't know if that's loaded or unloaded. Let's plug it in. Let's see what voltage we're getting out. 22 volts, so yeah, that is... That is way too low, that's like a ten to one or something like that. Well, we're gonna could try and calculate those, but we'll have to wait for this thing to boot up. Joys of modern technology. One eternity later. Alright, let's see if I can remember how to do a calculator on this thing. I'm sure this thing has a calculator, I'm sure this thing had a calculator on it last time, I yeah it is. Alright, so let's find out what the turns ratio is. So, our voltage going in was 245 volts. Let's divide that by 21.5. 21.5, and there we go. 11.39. Okay, so let's find out the impedance ratio. So, let's just square it. If I have a square button on this calculator, I don't think I have one. If not, I'll just multiply it by itself, but I don't see that, so I'll just have to multiply it by itself. Okay. We'll just say 11.39. That's close enough. So, yeah. So... T Impedance ratio of only 129, so we're going to need to find something else. And by something else, I mean some other transformer, because I've tested this one. I thought this one had a center tap, but no, it's a thermal fuse. And that other pin is not connected to anything at all, so... So according to my calculations, the transformer, the ideal transformer that we're going to need is going to give us 9.8 volts out when we put the mains across the whole of the primary. I'm not sure if I've got a transformer that does that. Well, this transformer looked promising. 
It's got a center tapped primary. But still, way too much output voltage. If that one wasn't there, it would be perfect, but... You know. So I think, what we need to do... We need to try... Something else. So what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna unwind this secondary until it gets down to 9 volts. And then I think we'll have our ideal transformer, because... We've got a center tap primary here. Well, it's not a center tap primary, but we can certainly use that as a center tapped primary. And we'll have the winding ratio that we need. So many turns of the secondary removed later, and we've got our ideal voltage. I mean turns ratio. So that's done. Guess now I've got to rewire this thing so it's a... Uh, Instead of a single-ended stereo amp, it's a push-pull mono amp. That's going to take some doing, but shouldn't take too long. Well, here it is. The amp is rewired. I know it looks very messy, but we're not going to be seeing that because we're going to be seeing that. Well, it's a rather messy setup, but we're all ready for a first power-up to see if this will work. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get all of this in that speaker there, but I'm going to try. But we need to see if this works first. So, we've got our main transformer, and then a voltage doubler, which rectifies and doubles the voltage from the transformer. And that's smoothed by a choke and another capacitor. And then that's going into our amplifier. This transformer also supplies the AC for the filaments. And then we've got our output transformer, which I'm a little bit concerned about because it's a little bit unbalanced. I measured the resistance between the center and each end. One end was about 45 ohms, the other one was about 39, so it's a little bit out. Hopefully that won't cause too much issues. Then I've got this meter connected between the transformer and one of the anodes, so we can measure the plate current. And the output of that transformer is connected to the speaker. So, I'm going to power this up, hopefully it's going right, to go alright, hopefully nothing's going to red plate, and hopefully it's going to amplify, hopefully it's not going to make any weird noises. So let's see what it does. Got our signal source hooked up and ready. So, let's plug this in. Let's plug this bad boy in, and see if it comes to life. Okay, I can see some filaments glowing. Of course, if anything goes wrong, I'm going to unplug immediately. I'm just keeping an eye on the plate current, which for some reason doesn't seem to have gone up at all. I don't know why. Tubes should be warmed up by now. They all appear to be on. Just to see if it's doing anything. Oh, it is working. It's not very loud, but it is working. I'm not sure about this plate current, though. It should be more than that. It should be about 180 milliamps. Let's stick that onto milliamps, maybe we can get a better... Well, I do have 470 ohm resistors at the cathode, so those are going to need to be lowered. But we have amplification, so that's really good. I think we're going to need a little bit more gain than that, though, because it's not all that loud, but it's working. Well, I didn't think this video would be complete without letting you suffer a little bit, so I'm going to strum out some chords. Now, bear in mind that I'm, only, I'm still learning chords, and I don't even know how to do changes yet, and my camera battery is running out again, so it'll probably run out before I've even strummed the first chord, but I'm, mount a rabbit on, but 
Yep. Let me just try strumming out a few chords here. Yeah, how it sounds. Make sure I'm not muting any strings. That's actually quite decently loud while I'm doing that. Uh, let's try D. And if I can, I'll try to play a C. If I can get my fingers to stretch that far. Oh, that's not right. What am I doing wrong? Let me just have a look here. Is that C? Yeah, that's C. Well, I think I'm going to end the video now because it is getting rather long, but so far, this has turned out really well. We just need to add an extra stage of amplification. I think, I, you know, there's enough room there for an extra tube to go. And also, we just need to get that plate current up where it needs to be. But anyway, that's going to be in the next video, so until next time, goodbye.